I want to acknowledge the Musqueam, on whose unceded traditional territories we stand. I come from uh, northern British Columbia on the coast, Prince Rupert. I'm a member of the Kakatlan Nation. And one of the things that's going on right now that some of you may have heard of is something called the Northern Gateway Project, or Enbridge, and their oil pipelines. And of course, it's, they're not alone. You also have a whole series of liquid natural gas plants that are planning to send ships down the coastline. One of the most serious things about this is it's going through a part of the area which is Kakatla territory. So most of the boats will pass through the majority of the territory of Kakatla. And we're moving from essentially zero boats to about 1,500 a year. And that's a lot of vessels. And leaving aside the issues of whether they're going to hit the rocks like the Queen of the North did, uh, which is in criminal court cases right now, what happens is that this is the area where the majority of people who still live in La Clan, the home village of Kakatla, harvest their food. This is the place that the food that's harvested in that community is sent out on boats and planes to Prince Rupert, to Prince George, to Vancouver, to feed family and relatives to maintain connections across the space of the land that's become British Columbia. But one of the things that's going to happen is that entire area will be turned into a commercial vessel traffic lane. And it not sounds very arcane, and for many people living in the Lower Mainland, it's not often seen or understood what that actually will mean, but what it does mean is for somebody in a 16 to 18 foot open skiff with a 25 horse outboard motor and a short chunk of gillnet, it means that they're going to be banned from fishing in the areas that people for generations have fished in. And this is just the most recent in a long series of bans. Uh, I often, in courses that I teach at UBC, describe the ways in which fisheries practices, aboriginal harvesting practices, have been criminalized. People often don't realize that if you violate the law in Canada by uh, being an Aboriginal person who goes and fishes according to traditional practices, and you then give that or exchange that or sell that to somebody, you will face not just civil charges, you'll face criminal charges for the illegal sale of your own fish. So what's happening right now with running Enbridge to oil tankers and Shell and Apache and Petranus, I think it's what the other one's called, and there's a couple other companies, with all those boats through Kakatla and Gitgat and Heisla territories, which are the nations that will be most directly impacted by the movement of these vessels, is that we're now beginning yet a further erosion and destruction of a capacity for people to live and for a capacity for people to maintain their lives and way of being. But it's not all that dim, there's things that we can do, and what's happening right here is a very good example of what can be done. To share the knowledge, to form alliances and connections, and in fact, even in the fishing industry in British Columbia, which has had some of the most acrimonious fights between Aboriginal and non-Aboriginal peoples, is also the place you found some of the strongest examples of cooperative alliance building. And that everyone realizes, whether they're Aboriginal or non-Aboriginal, that the health of a salmon, the health of a halibut, of a herring, of an ulican, of an abalone, of a clam, it's all connected, and it doesn't matter whether you're Aboriginal or non-Aboriginal, but the same effects, the same environmental destruction will destroy that for everyone. Now, one of the things about these omnibus bills that the Conservative government has been is planning through Parliament is that what they're doing is making it easier for Enbridge to run large bulk carriers through traditional Aboriginal territories. They're making it easier to put pipelines over Aboriginal treaty lands. They've actually, and I always find this a very puzzling and, and strangely ludicrous, but also in a tragic way humorous thing, they've redefined the nature of what constitutes a lake, a river, a pond, with a stroke of a pen, by merely claiming all they're doing is cleaning up a century-old piece of legislation called the Navigable Waters Act. It is a very arcane piece of information, but what they've done in terms of the change will fundamentally alter 
fundamentally alter the capacity for all people to protect and maintain the environmental integrity of rivers, lakes, streams, because they don't longer exist under Canadian law in that manner. Another little point that is quite intriguing, and it's a very small change, but has massive implications, and this is the earlier uh, on the bus budget bill that went through. The Department of Fisheries and Oceans no longer protects fish habitat. What they do is ensure the viability of commercially harvestable fish environments. And that's a kind of subtle and interesting thing, but what it basically means is a fish, like a stickleback, which stopped a big mine for a little while ago, if a stickleback is not a commercially harvested fish, and most of us probably don't know what a stickleback is, but it's a tiny, tiny insignificant little fish, but by focusing on commercial habitat, commercial environment, they made it a whole swath of areas completely open for exploitation. So what we need to do is to recognize the connections between where we stand on Musqueam land, where we go to school at UBC, the fact that across this province right now we're in one of the biggest gold rushes in the capitalist era. One of the major revalorizations and taking over of resources that's happening, and it's happening right now. And I don't know more is standing up to stop that. We need to reshape the ways in which we form relationships to the land, and it's time for the people who came to visit to really make the act to stay. And the way you do that is to start to forge real effective relationships with this land, and that is by what you're doing right now, standing side by side as allies with I Don't Know More. Thank you for your time. <laughs>